say this. Because this group, Lisa, can you hand out the sheet? Because this group is so small, you guys are you guys are firsthand being able to see the glory of God. You're being able to see God Himself. You're being able to look at God Himself and being able to see God during this class. Uh, when you get the message, my first scripture is Genesis 2.17 about the Garden of Eden. And everybody's asking about why did he eat? Okay, we're going to deal with it. We're going to show you why Adam ate. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? Listen, I'm not just sharing your scripture. I'm just telling you about who is here in the building, God himself, and you're able to witness him firsthand. Now, Shannon, not even knowing what I was going to share, okay, when he said go to Genesis, and he said chapter 2, and then he said, then he started reading the scriptures. I'm like, oh my goodness, no, he's not. And then everybody started asking the questions, and I'm just saying, I just got to be quiet. So I let's just go there. Wow. So but I'm just sitting here to encourage you that guess what? You're experiencing God firsthand. You need to understand, listen, that what's going on in this building right here, right now, it's God. And if you can receive that it is God, amen, then you can receive from God that what? God is speaking to us. He is speaking to us. Amen. I mean, sometimes I think it's just the pizza I ate in terms of, you know, picking a lesson or what happens. Are, are you following what I'm saying? But I'm here to let you guys know. I hear he talked about it. Are you kidding me? The first, the first <laughs> scripture. We're talking about Adam and Eve in the garden, in the tree. Genesis 2.17. You got to look at the sheet. I'm trying to tell y'all, it's God. Y'all here are experienced. Now, he thought that maybe he just got up and put on TV Jakes. I'm telling you, God is orchestrating this thing. <laughs> Amen. And see, firsthand, y'all are being able to witness God moving in your life. And therefore, when you live your life, you can see that, guess what? If God is speaking something to you, he will confirm that word. And you'll hear it somewhere else. And you'll be paying attention. And you'll say, that's God. You'll grab a hold to it, and it'll begin to flourish and bless your life. Now, i got to start off this message by telling you that today is September 11th. Mm -hmm. Okay? Today is September 11th. We know years ago what happened on September 11th. I, and I've shared this story before in this class, but it bears repeating today. That when I got here to Wichita, Kansas, okay? When I got here to Wichita, Kansas, I got here the first day of a, of a, a, a movement called the Summer of Mercy. And what the Summer of Mercy was, was a abortion rap for people who were trying to stop abortion. And we drove up, and I had never seen an abortion rally before, you know. And we would drive down Kellogg before it was the main major highway. This is 20 years ago. Stoplight after stoplight. Stop after stoplight. And there was a bunch of people all laying in front of this abortion clinic. I mean, are you hearing what I'm saying? And then a church that we went to, the pastor actually got arrested. I think Pastor Rob was one of the ones that got arrested as well, too. So, you know, and, and so they got arrested. They arrested hundreds of people, okay, for bear, you know, putting themselves before this deal. Okay, I say to myself, wow, because those of you who don't know, at a young age, uh, I had a relative who was pregnant, and I was the only one who had money. I didn't know anything about abortion, and he said, hey, if uh, uh, she needs the money to have the abortion, and the only way she can do it is if you give her the money. <clears throat> and I had just saved my money, I was trying to save for a car or something. And, and so I gave her the money. And so there's a relative I don't have. So this is not a message of condemnation for anybody who has committed an abortion or thought about it or knows someone about I mean, so if you watch my video, this is not about condemnation because I'm condemning myself. Okay? And so, because of that personal deal, now that I've come to light, you know, I realized I actually paid for one. So I, I was actually a, a partaker in the taking of someone's life. And so that's a, that's a hard burden to carry without Jesus Christ. You know, but with him, it's, it's, you know, you just have to trust God. And so, so when I drive past that place, I say to myself, one day, I'm going to go down to that abortion clinic. And my day off was always on Tuesday, as you guys know. And so, years and years went by. I never would go. You would see the signs. I would give them a thumbs up when I drive by because, see, it wasn't the big highway. You drive right by them where they got the signs or whatever. 
you know, so I give them a thumbs up, you know, I was, you know, and never had the courage, let me put it that way, never had the courage to go down and explain, what do you do, what do they do? I have no idea. Okay, but it's, I realize that it's wrong. So, one Tuesday morning, I decide, this is the day. I'm going to go down there. And so my wife was sleeping or something. I said, honey, I'm going to the abortion clinic. She said, this morning, honey. I'm going there this morning. I go to the abortion clinic and car after car. There's a bunch of Catholic people praying over here. There's some other people. I didn't get with any other groups that were praying together. They were like, you want to come over and pray with us? I was like, no. <laughs> so <laughs> I was just like, I don't even know why I'm here, what I'm doing here. I just need to be here today. And, uh, you know, and I just watched and I looked in the cars and I saw the young ladies and my heart broke. My heart broke as I saw car after car, woman after woman, driving in there and driving out, you know. And my heart was so broken that day. And then I just got in my car when I couldn't take any more. You know, tried to pray. I, I, I would love to say I was real spiritual and, you know, prayed and the mountains moved and shook and, you know, my heart was just broken. And then I go home. And I'm very somber. And there are different things. My wife was doing one of our girls' hair or something. I can't remember what was going on. But they had the TV on in the living room. And so I couldn't give her attention right away. And, uh, and forgive me if I'm getting all this wrong. I don't, I don't remember all the events. And uh, as I'm watching the TV, oh, the Charlie from Channel 10 or something, Good Morning America, is wrong. Good Morning America. Good Morning America. She's watching Good Morning America. And he was talking about there some kind of attack on the towers. And as I'm watching the news and him talking about it, I see the second plane go into the building. And the thing exploded because he was right in front of the second tower. Because they didn't know if it was a bomb. They didn't know what happened. And they saw the plane, and then they told him. And I was like, that was. So September 11th is a day that I will never forget. You know, what did the two have to do with each other? I don't know. Not to this day at all. Well, you were saying that nobody cared about the other place. Yes. You know, uh, you know, do you know that uh, abortion has killed more people than the Vietnam War? I mean, it's a lot of people. But do you know what? Because this gets into our message, okay? Okay, because I, and I just wanted to share that because what happens is, how does, how do you convince educated people who graduate from college, who sit on the Supreme Court, I mean smart, educated people who have access to all science, okay? Educated people. Not the kind of people that, you know, don't give you everything that you're supposed to get when you order through the pickup window at McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, how hard is that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, put the fry in the Happy Meal. You get home and the, you know, don't have a fry. I'm talking about educated people. I mean, are you hearing what I'm saying? And how is it, listen, you've got to get this. If you don't get this, we can't really go into the message. How is it that educated people could be convinced that a baby in the womb is not alive? You know, it's not alive when they don't want it, but when they do want it. Okay, now... Do you think if a mother has an accident, now I'm not here talking about abortion today, this is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a lie. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about somebody convincing somebody of a lie. Are, are, are you following what I'm saying? Educated people. Because if you were pregnant, if you were pregnant, and a drunk driver hit you, and you were eight months pregnant, okay, would you and your husband cry over the baby that you lost? Absolutely. Absolutely. Even if it was two months old, would you cry over the baby that you lost? Mm -hmm. There are people today that they have services. Yes. In actuality, and the way it's kind of crazy because the way the law states in that case, if, if, the, if the baby died, that person double. would be charged with wow. dirt with murder. They're charged with double murder. If the mom and the baby dies, but yeah. Okay. Wow. 
So, you see, and I, I'm just talking about educated people here and believe in the mind. I, I, I'm, just, and I'm not here to talk about pro-choice, pro-life. That's not my point. I'm just letting you know what happened to me as far as the events with September 11th. Okay, are the two connected? It was 10 years to the date from the time that I arrived here in Wichita. We got here in 1991, 10 years to the day. And so, and so, I, so I'm just saying, to this day, I'm still trying to figure that out. Okay, and still trying to figure that out. Go ahead. The same smart, educated people say that a cell on Mars is life, but they don't say a baby. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? About 200,000 people signed up to go live in a reality TV show on Mars? <laughs> 200,000. Yeah, spend, 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 spend the educated people. Yeah, <laughs> 200,000 200, people signed up to go on a reality TV show, spend the rest of their lives on Mars, have a video tape yet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, let's get to the Word of God because Shannon brought it up as far as the tree of life. Amen. Go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. Okay. This is going to be good. This is going to be interesting. Can somebody say interesting? Interesting. interesting. Okay. Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. We're going to start with the same one Shannon started with. Verse 16. So, we didn't call each other, right, Shannon? Not at all. We didn't know, right? Okay. Hey, Amen. I didn't see the T.D. Jakes thing either, okay? Even though I love T.D. Jakes as well. Uh, and it says, And the Lord God commanded who? The man. man. The man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou may freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest, that thou shalt surely die. Okay, we were talking about death. Okay, we're talking about death is not a part of life. See, I used to say that same phrase, that death is a part of life. Death is not a part of life. Because when life was here, death was there, but it wasn't a part of life. Because he said you should surely die, but it wasn't a part of life. Not yet. Are you seeing that? If he hadn't have eaten, he would still be alive. Absolutely. There'd be no death. You've got to get this. See, you've got to get this. I'm going from Adam to Jesus, okay? So, just so you can get this, so you, you've got to understand this, because this will make a, if you get this, it will help you in your day-to-day -day life, if you really get it. It will help you in your everyday walk with God, and the decisions, and how you think, and how you govern yourself, and how you conduct yourself, but you got to get it. He commanded who? The man, okay? And he said, the thou shall surely die, right? Is that what he told him? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, go to Genesis Chapter 3, verse number 4. Shannon brought this up. We went there, okay? Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said? Now listen, listen to the question. you got to listen to the question. Some people never even heard the question. They read it. They skipped over it. And listen to the question. He says, Yea, have you shall not eat of every tree? Of every tree of the garden? He asked her, you, you can't eat none, of, you can't eat from none of the trees. How does it read in, in, in another translation? Maybe, maybe it says it better. You will not surely die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat out of it, your eyes will be opened and you will let God know is, is that is that the beginning of it? The verse four or verse five? That's first. You said no, you started, started from the very first verse, though. Oh, you, you started from the first one. Four, but you started from the first verse. So it verse. says, you must not eat from any tree in the garden. Mm -hmm. Question mark. That's okay. And so, so the question was, the question was, you can't eat from any of the trees? She's like, wait a minute. No, 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 no. So now she's trying to defend it, right? <clears throat> now listen, what you got to understand, here's you got to understand, because when you think chronologically, now listen, God told, <laughs> okay, go back to Genesis chapter 2, okay? Verse 17. We, I got to get this point first. Okay? Now, 17, it says this. But out of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Right? God's talking to who? Adam. Adam. Okay. He's watching Adam. Have you ever told somebody something and you're watching their, their head spin or their eyes and you're like, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> you hear? Look at verse 18. After he told him this, look what he says in verse 18. And the Lord God said, wait, it's not good, it's not good that man should be alone. I don't know what this doctor's thinking, but it's not good that man should be alone. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Somebody told Eve about the tree. See, God didn't tell both of them. He told 
Adam. Okay. Somebody had to tell Eve about the tree. He didn't have to mention the tree. I'm just trying to tell you, God says it's not good that man should be alone. After he told him. Okay. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We, we, we want to blame Eve. I'm just trying to tell you. I'm just trying to talk to you about Adam. Okay? Because Adam was the issue. But somebody had to told her and showed her where the tree was. Okay? And so, now verse chapter 3. Let's go back. I just had to get that point clear. Chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than he beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Unto the who? Woman. How come you going to talk to Adam? Because Adam already knows what God said. Now, right. look, now you know you're right. Because Adam knew what God said. Okay, and so we said, and, and the woman, verse 2, and the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of every, of the, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. You see her answer? He asked her a, a question so out of the box. You can't eat none of the stuff? Are you, see, he's, he's causing doubt. You, you got to get the serpent. You can't eat nothing. Are you telling me you can't eat nothing? See, and she's not responding to him. Yeah, we can. you you got to get the inflections here. Yes, we can eat of, wait a minute. She's like, no. And the woman said, yeah. And she said, sir, we may eat of the trees of the garden. Yeah, we can. But the, the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God said, you should not eat of it, neither shall you touch it. Did he tell Adam you can't touch it? Remember the telephone game? <laughs> yeah, the telephone game. You tell one person one thing, the next thing. Yeah. He didn't say you could he didn't say you didn't have to, he didn't say you couldn't touch it. So he already knew. Okay, now now listen, we're we're going somewhere. And he says, now, God said, and he said, and he said, God has said, he said, in the midst of the garden, God has said, you should not eat of it, neither shall you touch unless you shall die. That's what she said. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. Stop right there, look at it. The lie. If you want to know why, Adam and Eve ate from the tree of garden, it was because of the lie. I'm telling you, if you get this principle, if you get what I'm talking to you about today, that death was not a part of life. That the reason why they ate from the garden was because of the lie. The reason why they ate from the tree was because of the lie. He said, you shall not surely die. Okay. For God doth know that in the day that you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as God's knowing good and evil. God's trying to keep something from you. He just turned them against God. You get this principle while I'm talking about death and life. I'm talking about death and life. And it says the beast was what more subtle than any what? Beasts of the field. Okay, are you following me so far? So what caused Adam and Eve to eat from the tree? It was the lie. It was the lie. What caused educated people to say that a child is not a child until it exits the womb? It was the lie. Now, it was the thing behind the lie that supported the lie to give the lie the push. So it's not just the lie, but it's, it's your body. And guess what? You can't raise those kids yourself. You, 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 you can't afford that, you know, because and, and it will ruin your life. What about college? And, and what about this? And what about that? The Bible says that Satan is the father of lies. 
You know what else he says? You know, you don't need Jesus Christ to get to heaven. Uh, and he gets people to believe the lie. You don't need Jesus Christ. Everybody goes to heaven. The lie. You can live any. See, see, to get you to swallow the lie, he has to put something else behind it. See, you can just live any old kind of way that you want. Now I can swallow the lie. Why? Because see, it's not that just everybody goes to heaven. I can live any old kind of way I want. Huh? Because God, God loves everybody. Turn them against God. Are you getting what I'm trying to say today? Are you, are you hearing me? It is the thing behind it. This is why this book is so important. And we spend so little time in it. And that's what we come to church to learn is this book right here. Amen. I mean, and now that you're, we're looking at it, and now you see that it was the lie. It was the lie. Are, are you following me so far? Okay, and it says, and the, uh, for God doesn't know that in the day that you eat there, I want you guys to read, because we got some NIVs here. I want somebody to read verse uh, 4 through verse 6. If you have an NIV. I'm in New King James. You will not certainly die, serpent said to the woman. For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her. Stop. He ate it. Stop. Get now, see, most people thought Eve ate of the fruit, and then, like, went home and told Adam. He said, what's that when you live? <laughs> <laughs> that was like fruit from the unforbidden tree. <laughs> the forbidden tree. And is that? Yeah, I kind of, so you're going to have to go eat now, too. Otherwise, I'm going to be dead all by myself. <laughs> and then he comes to the wall. Okay, okay. It says she was standing right there. He was standing right there. With, what does with her mean? Beside her. Beside her. He could have corrected him. But I'm telling you, Adam is the one who showed her where the tree was. And then going to try to pawn it off on a woman when God come talking to him. <laughs> we were dealing with the blame thing last week. We are not getting away from the blame. We're not listening. But see, when you understand, when you understand the 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 the, the events that went on, he told her about the tree and he told her what God said. I, I mean, are you here? Well, what, what tree, Adam? <laughs> now I have some interesting news. This is going to shock you. First of all, let's go back to Shannon's scripture. And let's see what God told that. Somebody else read that, because I, I just don't want this to be me, because this is really interesting. Go ahead, verse 17. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the Stop. garden. Stop. From what tree? Any. any. Go ahead, keep reading. But you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge and good of good and evil. And when you eat of it, you will surely die. Okay, go to verse 22. Chapter 3, verse 22. I just want to make sure that it wasn't just the King James that said it. Okay. And so, and the Lord God said, Behold, they have already eaten at this point. Behold, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life. What was the tree of life? There you go. Oh, so he could have eaten of the tree of life? Oh, go to 2.17. Can somebody else read it? Just read it, 2.17. You must not eat the tree of knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat of it, you will surely die. Okay. Read verse 16, I'm sorry. 
Sixty is what you read. And the Lord God commanded the man you are free to eat from any tree in the garden. Okay. Oh, oh, I see it. The tree of life was in the garden! Yeah. <laughs> he could have eaten from the tree of life! You want to see it? <laughs> <laughs> was the tree of life in the garden? If he wasn't in the garden, then why does God have to remove him from the garden for the fear that he might eat from the tree of life? He didn't say he couldn't eat from the tree of life! It's all it was in the garden! It's almost like uh, when Lucifer rebelled against God, God sent him out. He sent, sent him out of heaven. Him out of heaven. Exactly. But, but see, I'm, I'm trying to get you something. I'm trying to. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to tell you something about Adam. Okay. I want you to get that because it was his transgression. They could have eaten from the tree of life. You want knowledge and wisdom? Eat from the tree of life. Live forever, eat from the tree of life. I mean, are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. But on 22, it says, Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Mm -hmm. So are you saying at that time, when God acknowledged that he had eaten, he had a chance to go eat from the tree of life? No. That's no. correct. No, 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 no. That's correct. That, yes. That's correct. Yes, he could have, but God didn't want him to. Okay. That's why they were kicked out of the garden. Because we would have remained in that state with no redemption. We would have remained in this state. Forget that state. This state. We would have remained in this state. My wife would have to put up with a knucklehead for the rest of her life. Yes, for the fear of. Oh, for the fear Anytime of. Anytime you see less, it means for the fear of. That's what it means. So my recollection is because he ate from the forbidden tree, he then became human. Like, now there's death. Because That's correct. You, you are. If you want to call death, if you want to call death, human. And, and I'm telling you, because it's a part of our life and we're so used to it now, I'm just trying to tell you, if you don't get this principle, that death is not a part of being human. Death is a part of curse. Death is a part of Yes. You, you guys got to get it because we're going somewhere. We're going somewhere. You've got, we're, we'll take our time. Go ahead. Chapter 22, it say about the, the evil. All right. If we can eat it for the, for the tree of the lie. That is correct. And I'm pretty sure he eat before... Evil is what you cannot have in yourself. If you be evil in yourself, then you don't use the, the life in the right way how you're supposed to use it. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, honey. Okay. What? First of all, clarify what he said. Well, I think I was going to help him. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. What, what, we, have to, what we have to understand is, as people, what do we what do we say about people that we that we really like? We always say that they were a, what kind of person? We said they are a good person. We always say that was a good person. He's a good kid. He's a good father. He's a good whatever. But the tree of good and evil was one tree. It was one tree. So we're not asked to discern between good and evil. We have to discern between good and God. Because good and evil was the same tree. It was on the same tree. Did y'all catch that? When you say good, <laughs> you see that? The tree of good and evil. Amen. Thank you, Elise. Did y'all get that? So the so the when we see the commercials that have the devil on one shoulder and the angel on the other shoulder, and you're trying to decide, dear Lord, I wish it was that easy. I wish it was that easy. I know the devil. Our son was five years old. He was in preschool. He was in line. This is a true story. Our son, right? And he got in trouble, right? And he said, because what he did was he threw himself on the ground. And in line to go get some lunch or something. And the teacher's like, what, what are you doing? And she picked him up and she wrote him up for being disturbing and everything like that. And when he came, when he went to the school, the teacher told us that. Alicia went and talked to him, and she said, what in the world did you throw yourself on the ground for? He said, he said, the devil told me to throw myself on the ground.
the ground. <laughs>
Now you can not just be like Adam and Eve. God is getting us beyond that because they now know good and evil. That's humanity now. But God wants us to get to a place to where that we can discern between the tree of knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. Between the lot. And so, now, just because it's good, I had this guy who said, man, I got a better job that make it call for me more money. I said, just because it's more money doesn't mean that it's better. He said, what? I said, just because it's more money doesn't mean that it's better. See, they, they, they flash all this stuff in front of you, and so you better try to discern whether this is God, is this move, is this decision, is this God, or is this just a good decision? I've made a lot of good decisions that turned out bad. But here's one thing that we were trying to decide between where to send my son. He was going to Butler for a two-year school. His mom wanted him to go to a four-year school, and he plays football. And we had all these things going around. We had all these schools calling him, and we tried. My wife wanted to send him out so that he could... Uh, you know, mature as a young man, sitting a couple hours away, and we're trying to figure out all these decisions because this decision could, could change his life forever. And as I'm driving home, I get a witness in my spirit, and it's like, Friends University. And I come home and I tell my wife, Huh? What? He was fighting. And I was fighting her that I didn't want my son to go to Friends. I was like, I don't want to go to Friends, you know, University. He's a football star. Okay, I mean, and so, nothing wrong with friends, just in case anybody from Friends University is listening to this. I have a problem with that. Okay, so, when I see you at the game. Okay. But I came home, after fighting her, I came home, I said, honey, it's Friends University. She said, what? I said, it's Friends University. She said, what? I said, our son is going to Friends University. And after that, everything clicked like this. I mean, and before we knew it, we were on the cruise. We came back. He was enrolled. Everything was good to go, and it was good. And he's, the ha he's, he's so much happier yeah. at this place. Y'all, you're second parents. Right. Y'all know it. <laughs> <laughs> they might even be the first parents. <laughs> they got more time logged than we do. <laughs> but is he happier? Yes, yes, yes. Can you see the difference? Amen. But see, that was a godly decision. See, against my natural understanding. Are you following what I'm saying? See, it's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It's not the good and the evil. No, that's easy. Good. Discerning between good and evil is easy. It's good and God. That's the hard thing. That's the, that's the difficult thing. When, when, when Satan puts something good, see, the Bible says, oh, let's go back there. I, you got to see it. Go back to Genesis chapter 2. I'm sorry, 3. Go ahead and read verse 6 again for a step. When the woman saw that fruit of the tree was good. Stop. That the tree was what? Good. Good. Yes. It was funny you just went there because I was just sitting here thinking about this question. If she had not ate from the tree of good and evil yet, how did she even know what good was to know that when she looked at it, that it was good for food? Mm. Why? Because the devil had told her it was good. Good Ooh. God. He planted that seed. Yep. He planted that seed. Are y'all are y'all catching that? Are y'all catching this? See, this is this is. This is the challenge. She saw that it was good. See, when people say, you know, I just want to pray about it. See, it's not just we want to pray about it because we're religious. Man, we're trying to discern this thing. I mean, true story. I mean, we're trying to discern whether we go to one dealership or the next. And we felt like God was wanting us to go to the dealership where I was at. And so God told me, he said, just to show me that that, that this was the place where he wanted me. He says, give them an ultimatum. And so I'm like, give them an So I came home and I'm like, listen, God wants me to give them an ultimatum. Give this dealership an ultimatum. And so I didn't call them, but I told my wife, if they don't hire me by the end of the month, I'm not going. 
I already interviewed, they already met my wife, and they called me at my other dealership where I worked. I really wanted to leave my other dealership, and they kept calling. And so, in the last day of the month was Saturday. And I came home, and my wife says, because she really wanted me to go to this other place where I'm at now. Okay, and, and it was a blessing. Okay, and she said, did they call? I said, no, they didn't call. She's like, oh, man. We sat down to eat dinner. 7.30, ring, ring, never called me at home. Hey, Derek, yeah. You ready to go to work? Yeah. Can you start Tuesday? Sure can. All right, we'll see you then. See you then. Bye. Bye. Click. <laughs> That's how it went. Am I right? Is that how the conversation went? Listen, I was like, you almost missed me. I'm not coming in groveling and begging and, oh, please. Get... No, I serve a living God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And when you can discern between good, I was trying to see if it was God. And when all of a sudden that confronts me, when they call me that day instead of the next day, I knew it was God. Amen? And so that's what I'm trying to say, is that this is the foundation of, of life. But you've got to get this, that death is not a part of humanity. And death came into humanity based on a lie. Amen. And Satan wants all of us to, he wants all of us to eat from the tree of good and evil. Well, it's still, it's, it's still good. I mean, are, are you hearing what I'm saying? Like, like Shannon was saying, he wants you to think, well, we don't have the time. We'll still be okay. It's a, we, we, we can get away with it. It's okay. Now listen, I always say this, because of abortion and other things, God has enough grace and mercy for us all. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? He has enough grace and mercy. You know what? I can't even go any further. I, we got, listen, we haven't even gotten into this thing. I mean, because because we got to get Adam first. You got to understand that Adam was responsible. You gotta, you gotta understand that Adam showed that lady where the tree was. He's the one who told her about it. If, if you don't get that, then you don't under, you're not gonna get the next part. And so, and if you don't get this about the knowledge of the tree of good and evil, and the tree of life, which God wants us to eat from, and that you can understand that just because something is good, I mean really good, it's not God all the time. And it will save you. It will save you. Who knows what that guy was hiding? Because the person said, I just can't put my finger on it. You ever meet somebody, you say, there's just something about them. I can't put my finger on it. I mean, you ever meet them? You're like, there's just something about that person. But then, a person's full of light, you're like, you're like, I don't know who that person is, but I want to meet them. And then all of a sudden you meet them and they say, oh yeah, I'm a Christian. I know there was something about you. I mean, are you here? Because you're discerning. Amen? So now we're going to do a little bit of review because we can't go any further because y'all are going to have to swallow this. That death is not a part of life. And death came in to life. How? Through a lie. Okay. And Adam and Eve ate from the garden because of the lie. Okay, and some people say, oh, are you telling me? Are you kidding me? A lie? Listen, people are aborting babies all day long, educated people. Because of a lie. Because of a lie. Mm -hmm. So don't tell me that, because Satan is very subtle. Satan is very subtle. More subtle than any beast in the field. See, listen, I'm going to say this again. I got to tell you something about the devil. He does not want to destroy me. That is not his goal. You know what his goal is? You to destroy yourself. You to destroy you. He wants you to destroy you. He wants you to call down the curses upon you. He wants you to call down the curses upon yourself. He wants you to destroy you. He wants you to destroy each other. Listen, and I had to get to the point, and I'm not the perfect all the time, but I had to get to the point, so I'm not going to allow the devil to use me to destroy my wife. I'm not going to allow the devil to use me to destroy my wife. So I had to guard my tongue, my thoughts, my heart, and I'm saying, mm, it's not coming out of my mouth. 
to destroy her. Because he will use who he can. He used Peter. We saw that a couple of weeks ago. To try to come against Jesus. No, you're not going to die. He said, get this behind me, Satan. And I'm trying to tell you is that don't let Satan use you because he gives you a lie. And all the way home, he gets you drunk. All the way home. Or all day while you're sitting home. Now he's feeling you. He's getting you drunk. And now you're remembering every evil thing he did. Everything. And by the time you walk through the door, he's got a lollipop and some ice cream in his hand. And he gets it, okay? Are you hearing what I'm saying? He usually uses a small element of truth. And distorts it. That's correct. I'm glad you said that. He uses a small element of truth. Did you not know that he said that God knows that you'll become as him, knowing good and evil? And you know God turned around and said they'll become as us? Yeah. See, he's a small... See, that part was true. Yes. The other part about it is, you said it earlier, she said uh, that we couldn't touch the tree. Yes. So then after, you know, she goes in and she touches it, she didn't surely die. Right. You that's know, correct. so that, that was, you know, so then that's that way it opened up more to, you know, to go into itself. Okay. Right. Amen. Did y'all catch that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why it's a blessing for kids and get caught, for us to get caught early. Yes. We do something we're not supposed to be doing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a blessing to get caught early. You'll thank um, me for this later. What? <laughs> <laughs> We had one of our kids, so, every time they tried something, they got caught. <laughs> the first time. The tree of good and evil was how many trees? One. one. Okay, and the other tree was the? Tree of life. And why did God take Adam and Eve out of the garden? So, so they went to the tree, tree of life. Of life. Why did God take Stay forever. Stay forever, yeah. And again, one more time. Death is only part of life. life. No. See, if you get that, if you get that, all of a sudden, because we're going to get into it next week. Oh, my goodness, I wish we could have gotten to it today. But we're going to get to you. You're going to understand what the gospel really is. And you're going to see how Jesus and Adam, how they, how they pair up. And, I mean, it's, it's really uh, going to get really good. It's going to refresh us and it's going to help us, like I said, in our everyday life. Amen. To not just to discern between good and evil, but between good and God. If God say turn right, turn left, don't do that. Don't do that. Okay. Obviously, you know, my TD Jakes, you talk about TD Jakes? When God tells you something, he said this. This is what TD Jakes said. He said, never forget what you do not know. Now, how can you remember something that you don't even know? So do not forget what you, so how can I, for, but don't forget what you don't know. You be obedient to what you do know. Be obedient. Now, meaning, I didn't know that my son was going to connect like he did at Friends. Mm -hmm. So when God tells me Friends, I had to say, uh, God, you know something that I don't know. See, when God said, mm, don't take the job if they don't call you by such and such. Because he knows something that I don't know. Don't, mm -mm, don't go to, don't, mm -mm. don't forget what you do not know because God is all knowing, right? Mm -hmm. Are you following me? I just want to give you the difference and thank you, Alicia, for bringing out the tree because that, that really wasn't in my message, but it was. It, it was so foundational for us today that we get that we get that, and that we are led by His Spirit. Amen. And when somebody offers us something good, and you're like, "You're not taking that," you're not taking it. Well, that's just to say, when when good is present, evil is also present with it. Right. So like like before, you know. You know how many good things, how many people offered me churches and youth pastor jobs and all these things. And right before taking Moses, I was offered a whole church. <clears throat> and that was a good thing. And I was like, it wasn't God. Not for me. Not for 
be. Uh, see, I wouldn't be here today. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But see, but when you follow him, see, see God, when I turned it down, I had to say there was something I didn't know. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? And me and LaDonna had a connection like that, and me and Shannon, yeah, you yeah, go there about that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, that was, uh, that was a true case of, of spiritual warfare trying to keep that connection from coming together. Yes, and you're right. Oh my gosh, you're right. Spiritual, and see, we're even talking about spiritual. <laughs> it's in here. We're, we know we gotta go, but it's all in here. Hey, we got plenty of time. This isn't an eight-week class, remember? I know. <laughs> we got more so, weeks to go. Amen. <laughs> I, I, I want to read this, and then we're gonna close. I'm just going to read it. It is First Peter. I'm sorry. First Peter chapter five, verse seven. I want I want us to do I want us to do this on this real quickly. On the bottom of Faith Bell was there. This thing says, it says, because we're gonna have the same sheet next week, amen. So we're not getting anything different. And it says, write down five things you should be doing better. And then write down one reason keeping you from doing better. What is the one? Write down five things. It could be in the Lord. It could be on your job. It could be in your family. It could be with your wife. It could be. Write down five things that you know you could do better. And then write down one thing that's keeping you from doing better. And I want you to bring this back next week. Okay, so bring this back. I'm going to do mine. So I want everybody to bring uh, this back. Because it, it'll... Guys, wow, that's so funny you're talking about spiritual warfare. Like, wow. Okay. That, is, isn't that so crazy? He, he just... Uh, okay, 1 Peter 5.7. 1 Peter 5.7. I'm just going to read it. That's a connection. It says, casting right. all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, speaking. as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom the King James says he may devour. See, it says, be sober, be vigilant. And so, if you're sober, watch what you take in. Watch what you take in and be vigilant with your mouth. Watch what comes out of your mouth. That's what I was trying to talk about, protecting what comes out of my mouth. Be vigilant. Be sober is when all of a sudden you're taking in the thoughts and all the things that you're remembering and you're remembering, oh, he did this, he did that, he did that. See, the devil's getting you drunk. And you're drunk. And you get people drunk so that you can take advantage of them. Are, are you following what I'm saying? And so, be sober. He says, be sober. Watch what you take in. When, when, when you start seeing all the emotions you're remembering, you say, oh, man, the devil's getting me drunk. Oh, no, 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 no. No, because the Bible says in Philippians 4 8, whatever is pure, holy, and just, there be any virtue, there be any praise, think on these things. Not on all the things that he's done. Not on all the things that she's done. No, because you get drunk like that, now the devil can take advantage of you. And now you're not in the sermon no more. Now you're mad. And be vigilant. Watch what comes out of your mouth. Don't just say anything and everything all the time. Just whatever you want to say. No, be vigilant. Why? It's not you! What I'm trying to tell you, it's not you. It is the enemy in our life that is using us to destroy each other. See, if you understand death is not a part of life, <laughs> if you get that, and you get that it happened because of a lie, and you understand how subtle the enemy is, but you know what? We're not watching for him. We're not looking for him. And we're mad at each other, and our houses are up in uproar and destroyed. And God is not even glorified. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, by the time we get done with this message, I'm telling you, amen, we're going to be equipped. As what Shannon was saying, he's into my message, spiritual warfare. Amen. It was some tools, but we have to get some understanding. And I 
think because we reviewed it. I think everybody got it, right? You know there's two trees, right, sis? She said, how many trees? There's two. Amen. And we know which one we should be eating off of. Okay? And so you got to look at some things in your life and you got to say, is that the tree of good and evil? Maybe I need to go eat from the tree of life because I've been eating from the tree of good and evil for quite a while today. How about I go eat from the tree of life today? It just might help me. Just might. Maybe. Yes. All of my life, I've always tried to do what I think I should do in the Okay. And the last few days, a week or so, I've been struggling seriously. And like, um, not even wanting to get out of sleep, having some serious problems. And the other day, last night, I just said a prayer and I said, just give me back who I am, knowing what I'm supposed to be doing that you want me to do. And I got this morning and I just, a fact. The first thing that I did again was gone. I mean, see, my see, and wrong you. Like, see, and, and listen to this. Listen. You know the biggest, you know the biggest lie that the devil tells? That you're the devil. You, you'd be amazed how many people you meet in church who don't believe that the devil exists. What better way for him to infiltrate your home by telling you he don't exist? Oh, there's, you know, when we go storm the gates of Normandy, there's no one Nobody, to, don't even worry about anybody shooting at us. Dude. There's nobody there. <laughs> nobody there? What about the satellite report? Ah, oh, that's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> the beaches are nice. Where's, so why are we going? to go try the beaches in Germany, see what they're like. You know, I mean, or, you know what I'm saying, beaches in Europe. You know, I'm, I'm just trying to tell you that. You see how foolish that sounds? But he convinces us that he doesn't exist, and so therefore we don't resist him. And we just let him run rampant in our homes and our lives, and we let him use our mouth, and we let him just constantly tell us what to think. And we're going to get to that next week. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, this is probably going to outdo grace. Amen. Like you said, Shannon, we, we, we declare war on the devil. Amen. And now we're going to get equipped for the battle. Amen. Because we're going to start having victory from this day forward. Amen. I'm going to say that again. We're going to start having victory from this day forward. Amen. I'm going to say it again. We're going to have we're going to start having victory in our homes this day forward. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Are y'all with that? Yes. Amen. Father, we declare war on the devil. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Lord God Almighty. Lord, we declare war on ignorance in the name of Jesus, oh Father. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, that you fill everyone here tonight with your spirit, oh God. God, forgive us. We repent before you, oh Father. Lord God, for allowing the enemy to run rampant in our homes, in our minds, and in our lives, oh Father God. Lord, we pray that you give us the strength this night to be sober and vigilant, oh Father. In the name of Jesus, oh Father, that your son might be glorified in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen.